Shalom, we are now at the Lopez family. Um, starting with Hashem, Parashat Bo, Parashat Sheva, a very interesting thing, a lot of questions uh, today. And I would like to share with you a lot of um, juice today. We'll start with the question. First of all, Parashat Bo, it's a parasha that we have the last three planks. And in this parasha, we're going to have the locust, the darkness, and <clears throat> the plagues of the firstborn. And it's also the gematria of Bo. It's hinted in the name of the parasha. How much is Bo in gematria? The numerical value of Bo. Bet, bet it's two. Aleph is? Six. Two plus one. Oh, I mean one. Uh, three. <laughs> three. Very good. Four. You guys are very good in math. Five. So three all together. Two plus one. This is the last three Plagues, wonderful. I would like to suggest, and Bazashim will mean, uh, I'll mention that 30 minutes from now also. Uh, <clears throat> whoever wants to ask questions, now the screen is in front of me so I can see. Uh, from time to time, I'll take a glance and look at it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Hebrew or in English, it's fine. So, first of all, the first question is why to have these 10 plagues? Variety of different strikes, plagues, punishments. What do Hashem is trying to show here? So Hashem is trying to show everybody, not only the Egyptians, the Israelites themselves, the Hebrews, they have enough confidence to leave Egypt. So that Hashem control the universe, earth, Everything, his creation, <clears throat> from the depth, abyss, right? Till the, the moons and the skies and earth and what's above earth. Everything from all different angles and sides. Hashem is under control. And we'll see it in the plagues. Blood starts from the depth. Under the ground. Water. Places nobody can see. You know that eventually, I don't know if we'll get to it today, but <clears throat> only one-fifth of the Israelites left Egypt. It's sad. Imagine to yourself that, God bless. Imagine to yourself that out of 15 million, only one-fifth left. So it's around 3 million plus minus. It was 15 to 16 million people in Egypt. Around 3.5, maybe 4 million left. What happened to the other? Exactly. Over 10 million people died. In the died Makata and buried in Egypt. On the ninth Most of them in the Makata plague Makata of darkness. Of darkness. darkness. Right? When we get to the, the, the plague of darkness, you won't believe anything that we will learn today. And we'll see that the plagues are very, very... Special, special to that era, to that time. <clears throat> and Hashem wants to do that for a reason. He gives it, brought it for a reason. First five plagues, he hardened his own heart. The last five, he Hashem, Hashem. did it to him. Hashem did it to him. Why? In some point, after Hashem giving you so many chances, when you lock the door before God, next time you call, Hashem will lock the door before you. We call it Nenaelet Adelet Bifnei Hareshaim. The door is get closed before the wicked. So, yes, you have a free choice, but you used it the wrong way. Hashem will give you no help anymore. You need to make an extra, double extra, yes, triple please. extra efforts in order for your Teshuvah to be accepted. It's very hard. People losing their life, they're wasting their life here for not doing Teshuvah. Because Hashem gave you so many chances. He's so merciful. Nevertheless, you betrayed Him and you slap Him in the face. There's a figure of speech, right? And yet he's willing to accept you. Hashem, with the tools that he gave you, the hands, the eyes, the mouth, the legs, 
you sin against him. He give it to you. He said, I want to give someone an ice cream and he take the ice cream and then shove it to my face. The next day I'm doing the same thing and shove it to my eye. Every day I'm doing it, he just take the ice cream or the, any other food I'm giving him and throwing it to my face. Nobody will do it. After the first time, first time, he won't give this guy food anymore. This is what we do to Hashem every day. We're making doing so much sin with our own body and it's ridiculous how much Hashem is merciful and is willing yet to accept us. Baruch ato Adonai Eloheinu melech o'olom sh'akol nihiyo b'idvoro Amen. Thank you. So, what was so special about, if you want to go over the 10 plagues, we've learned that last week, seven plagues, we just mentioned them, and we said what was the reason, measure for measure. Now we want to go a little bit deeper to the plague itself. What really happened in the plague of blood? So, we know that in the plague of blood, it was all over Egypt. In the sea, in the Nile, in the rivers, even people that had a cup of water, as soon as it turned in the Nile to the blood, boom, in every cup, it says, call a yamim, everywhere, call a main, all water turns to blood. Who can control that? It's not a magic trick. Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's magicians were able, if you look at the Pesukim, the verses in the, in, in the Torah, in the Torah, they were able to do something similar to, you know, they had the power, they had black magic power, that they can control your eyesight. They show you a bucket of water, they can really change it to blood, but you see water, red water. So you believe it's water, it's blood, it's not. The Rahim HaKadosh points out, how do we know that Moshe really turned the rivers Denial to a blood. Anybody have an idea? Because of the fish? Because of the fish. Shaul, your fish. Shaul Gobea said, because of the fish. What happened with the fish? Died. The fish died. died. They won't die if it's just uh, food coloring or just camouflage. It's just a trick. And it stunk. The smell was horrible. All over Egypt. And now, we can ask a question. What was the fish fault? Why did they have to be punished? Millions of them died. In the plague of flood, animal sins, people sins. Okay, so they both got punished. But here, in the plague of blood, why they got punished? They because the they eat the kids, they the babies. Ma? They, they eat the, the babies. babies. Very good. So the Ma'am Lois book says, when the Egyptian was throwing the, the babies to the Nile, the fish ate them. So it's a fish. <laughs> a fish can think. doesn't think. You know that God teaches us. In the way, all the creation, all the animals were created to serve us. Anything that happens, or well, this is by the way, why we permitted to eat animals. Otherwise, why we have the permission to kill another animal? So they come here to serve us. Of course, you have to be careful not to make them suffer, not to suffer, and so forth. So even, this is something we're saying every day. When the Egyptians sunk in the Red Sea, the Sus, the horse, and its rider get punished as well. Okay? Hashem says, Open your eyes, open your ears. Even if an animal that doesn't have a brain cannot make choices, I punish? Special, I mean, even you, even more so, a human being, that you can make choices. You can make choices and you choose to do bad, you will pay for it. You choose to do good, I'll pay you. I reward you. Everybody says, the Farshim says that in the plague of blood, the Jewish people become finally very rich. Very rich. How they made money? Simply by selling 
water to the Egyptian. You know, people cannot survive without water, especially that a place that they, it's uh, everybody. You know, it's a hut. Everybody needs to drink. And the Egyptian has 12, 15 kids from different wives. You have wives. You have animals, livestock. No water. Even the water that he already had cannot be used. So at some point, imagine to yourself, in the middle of the day, boom, no water. People, while drinking, blood. What are they going to do? So forget about shower. They're going to waste water on shower. What about the cooking? Any water that they cook now, turn to blood. Can eat it. Stinks. So millions of people looking for water. There's a shortage. There's none. All of a sudden, the rumor spreads really quick. The Egyptians learned that the Jewish people have water. So the Egyptian called his servant. And he says to him, Okay, get me water from the Nile. Get him water. It's water. He's taking from the blood. It's water. As long as the Jews taking care of it, it's water. He tried to drink blood. Okay, so he told him, you know what? You hold the bucket and I'll drink. You hold the bucket, you drink blood. He says, you know what? I'm going to take a straw. You one side and one side. You know? It's like two uh, people before they get married. Everything is, uh, you know, flowers. and uh, See if you do that after you get married. Right? So they take one straw to them. Uh, to the Egyptian, one straw to the Jew. The Jew drink blood, they drink water. The Egyptian drinks blood. What can they do? So the Jew told them, you know what? I didn't want to tell you. So actually, you do you have a lot of fun back then, right? He says, but I'm selling water. <laughs> mm. Okay, how much is it? He says, okay, we are selling one and a half liter. It's only $150. What? No, but today we have a discount. It's only if you buy them at six, it packs. So this is crazy. Salamah, you don't want? Okay, I'm leaving. No, no, come back, come back. People started to buy from the Jews, you know, six or nine hundred dollars for water that they get for free. Unlimited source of water. A bucket, he takes the bucket. $200, please. Thank you. Take it. What business? Many Jews gather around this, the Nile and Wales and rivers, wherever they could find water. And the Jews were around in long lines. Egyptians need a lot of water for themselves, for the livestock. At some point, the Jews didn't have enough place in the pockets. People come with silver coins and gold. And many good things. There is very interesting pasuk in chapter seven, pasuk yud chet, verse eighteen, seven eighteen, and it says the following: that I mean, let me just in order to save time, I'm just going to translate it. So it says that the fish. I'm sorry, the, the, the Nile will turn to blood and the fish will die and it's stunned. And then it says in the verse 18, okay, chapter 7, verse 18, Venilu Mitzrayim, and the Egyptians got tired to drink from that water. So they got tired from drinking, from not drinking. It's blurry, it's not clear. If you go a few verses after 24, it already says, the Egyptians were digging around Amen. Egypt, all over. Amen. They could not drink from the Nile. Amen. So they're digging. What's the problem is, they're digging and they see blood. So this Egyptian goes to the Jew and says, you know what? Some Egyptians pay, some says, ah, I can't pay you that much. It's very expensive. So you know what? Get a barrel, go to the Nile, bring me water, I'll touch it. You pay me, give me just 250, and it turns to water. Fine? So they go, they take a lot of water. He runs to the Jew, and the Jew says, my 250, please. Take the money, he blesses the water, he touches the water, and then it turns to water. The Egyptians are so happy now. 
What is he doing? He takes 